There we go. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to In The Nest, episode three. We've got a very, very special guest VIP tonight because it's double winning, double winning Eagles manager, Gary Central. Gary, how are you this uh, it's Wednesday, isn't it now? I'm losing track of days now. I'm all right now. We've got the, got the machines going. <laughs> Yeah, lovely. All right. It always happens every so often, Gary, so don't, you know, don't panic. Um, so those who haven't seen this before, um, they're only sort of 30 minutes long. Um, I'm mindful of the gaffers, got other stuff to do tonight. Um, we're generally going to talk about, obviously, the season, Bedford Town and going forward. Um, and if you can't stay and watch it all, uh, we won't be offended, uh, but it will be reshared late this evening, so you can watch it back at your leisure. So... Gary, first question, right, or first thing. Have you got those winners' medals by any chance in the house or not? No, because I don't actually I don't actually keep medals. I give I actually give them to a couple of supporters. I give them, uh, league winners one to Max, obviously the Bedford diehard fan, and I give my champions of champions one to Jane, the photographer. Love uh, that. And the losing one, um, well, the two boys who come and watch at Luton, they, they walked out of there like B.A. Barakas because no one wanted to keep them, so they, they've they got all them. So, yeah, I, I don't actually keep them, so I've never really been a uh, medal keeper, so to speak. So, yeah, my, my boys got a couple of the big ones when I won League Two in the conference and things like that, but the the ones as a manager I've not, not really kept, to be honest. Fair play to you. That, that probably tells a lot of people who perhaps don't know uh, everything about you, Gary. That says quite a lot. The fact that you even give your winners' medals away to the fans—that is incredible. I've not actually heard that um, of a manager. So hats off to you, Gary. That's incredible to hear. Um, and I'm sure those people—it really, really must take them back when you did that. Yeah, Max. Max was very, very happy. As was Jane. So yeah, um, just a shame we didn't get the the third one. Um, which would have which would have been someone else's pleasure, but never mind. You know, we had a great season, and you know, already really looking forward to the next one. Absolutely. So we need we need to mention it because your your right hand man has had a very special day today, hasn't he? Yeah, yeah. Fiftieth. <laughs> big big. That's it. So Darren, Darren Eady, if you're watching, happy fiftieth birthday. Um, am I right in thinking there's a bit of a um, a bit of a trip coming up for you boys? Yeah, there is. Um, we're all off to um, John. 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 The owner said that if he, if we won the league or we got promoted, he'd take us all away for um, a few days. And you know, he's been good to his word. Um, fair play mm -hmm. to him. And yeah, we're off to Benidorm um, next Thursday. Only, only for two or three nights, but I think that'll be enough with the way these boys. That will be enough. <laughs> they, 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 don't, they, they don't mess around. Um, we had a little day out on Sunday, and they, they didn't mess around and. Um, yeah, we're looking. We're looking forward to it. You know, that's a that'd be a nice, you know, a nice thing to do at the end of what's been a grueling ten months. That'd be nice to get away for a yeah. couple of days and unwind, shall we say? Yeah, let off some steam. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we look forward to hearing about it. I think I'm sure those people will. Um, all the stories when you guys get back. So let's rewind because it wasn't that long ago. You had that um, game, which some people was, didn't even know existed or was going to happen but it was still very much a championship game wasn't it because it was obviously Plymouth came to Bedford and it was an absolute goal fest wasn't it yeah it was and that that was a typical game of two halves if I'm being honest you know that they was a little bit under strength we was a little bit under strength but they they come out the blocks probably like no one else no one else had it as this year you know they pressed us really hard and you know, I stand on the sideline thinking, I'm not sure they're going to be able to keep this up. Like, you know, they set six hour bus journey. They, yeah. pressed, they scored some great goals. Um, the lads scored an opportunist goal when he's, when he's seen our keeper off the line as well. And pretty much, I was that, I was probably disappointed by our first half performance. That was probably the biggest rollicking I've given this season, if I'm being honest. I was, I was disappointed. Um, I didn't want us to end the season. You know, we was 24 unbeaten. I didn't want to lose, you know, I wanted to go out on the 25. And to be fair to the boys, they came out second half and we was we was unplayable at times second half. They got tired, we pressed on and that, that typ typified our season in many ways. You know, we've been behind so many times this year. 
we've been written off so many times and you know every time the boys have dug deep and pulled something out the bag and that's that's testament to them that's testament to their characters and the testament to the to the group's never say die attitude yeah absolutely and i mean it was interesting also to look at the, the list of the scorers i mean obviously you know Rene gets a lot of plaudits and so does connor for scoring a lot of goals at the top but always game to game there always seems to be other scorers on the sheet and that happened particularly in that game because um was it Dan, uh, Dan Walker obviously scored um was it Huey scored Rory scored and then uh Craig uh Craig played didn't he Craig McCann yeah. Smith and uh, net his yeah. one didn't he that must have been unreal for him to get back on the score sheet as well yeah he got two Craig but you know when we talk about the goals obviously we scored 100 goals this year in the league um I think your two strikers got 50 between them. I think we got 25, 26 from the middle of midfield. Um, we got 10 or 11. Uh, no, probably more than that. Probably 12 or 15 from centre halves. I think Charlie got 11 on his own and Rory's chipped in with four or five. And then we've, we've probably got another 10 or 12 from wide position. So, yes. although Ren, Ren got his fair share, you know, you, you've always got a chance to win the league if your strikers get 50 between them, which they did. Um, yeah. And obviously, 25... Uh, Butts got four, Danny got nine, who got six or seven, Callum got seven, Will Will got a couple, I think. But you know, to get twenty five to thirty goals from the middle of midfield is, you know, that's that's a recipe for winning the league as well as getting fifteen from centre half as well. So goals come from everywhere. Um we didn't concede too many either. So we were we were just strong for the division and next year will be a big test. I went I went and watched the playoff final um for step three on Monday afternoon, and you know, Peterborough Sports were far too strong for Colville. But you know, that's they are class. They yeah, are great side, and that's a that's a challenge next year for us to try and get to that level. Mm -hmm. And Gary, where where does that rank for you in terms of breaking that hundred goal mark in a season? It's such a good achievement for for any team, any league, isn't it? That isn't it. That is especially in a thirty eight game season. You know. Yeah. A few years ago, they were 42 and 44 game seasons. In a 38 game season, you know, you've got to average nearly three goals a game, which is yeah. which is tough with the away trips and everything else. But we we did have one eye on that quite a way out. From, probably from about 85, we wanted to try and get to 100. And ironically, we was actually chasing uh, Peterborough Sports' record. I think they, they got 108. Um, and their goal difference, I think they got 80, we got 72. So we was chasing, I was chasing a couple of Jimmy's records, but we didn't get them. <laughs> um, but, you know, we, we we give a great account of ourselves this year. And I don't genuinely think we've got anything to fear at the next level. Obviously, we'll give it the respect it deserves. And, you know, we'll we'll go in there and give all the teams respect because that, that is a different type of level. But, with the group that we've got and how young we are and how we can still improve, I still think there's, you know, there's there's another level in a lot of these boys. So hopefully that that will prove prove that next year and hopefully we can give a good account of ourselves and keep getting plenty of people down the area. And you know, we lost one game there all year this season and make it a bit of a fortress for ourselves because we'll need to be good at home next year because there is some tough away yeah. trips. Yeah, I mean, obviously I haven't I haven't been to the area and um, seen seen Bedford's. Um, it definitely is a fortress, but it's just a case of seeing what it that, will that happen in step three. And there is, as you say, there's certainly a lot of potential in the squad, isn't there, to do the same next year. So fingers crossed. So satisfaction wise, obviously last game that golden boot was up for grabs in the league. And I remember uh, being on Twitter, checking on the scorers, talking to Daz Eady at the time, uh, that Aylesbury game, uh, saying to him, "Oh, at the moment, you know, da -da 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 -da, Rene's ahead by such and such." Um, what what sort of sense of achievement is that for you as manager as well to have your striker to call that golden boot? Well, to be honest, I'd have probably took him off a lot more towards the end of the season if he weren't in the running. But you know, we we wanted to, we wanted all the marbles this year. We wanted to win yeah. everything. Um, we wanted to win the league. We wanted to win the Beds Cup. We wanted to win the Champions. We wanted the Golden Glove which Pedro got, I believe. We wanted the top goal scorer. We wanted 100 goals. We wanted to concede the least. And to be honest, on the last day of the season, I think some of the boys actually told Rennie that DJ had scored just to like, kick him on again. Oh, right. 
you know, we was we was aware of it, but that was that was nice for Wren at, at this stage of his career. You know, the homecoming, Bedford boy coming back seventeen years later after getting a promotion before with them, and I don't think he would have believed that at the start of the season he would have got thirty three goals this season, but he did. Mm. Um, he's a great great finisher. He scored some great goals. He scored some important goals. Um, more importantly, what probably go unnoticed with Ren is he defends set pieces really well for us as well. He comes back for every set piece, defends them really well as well. So, you know, he he had a brilliant season, and you know we'll have a chat with Ren, see what he want to do. You know, he was talking about retiring a year or two ago, but um, you know this might have just give him the you know impetus to maybe carry on. But we, you know we'll have a chat once all the dust is settled. But yeah, I think. You know, he's exceeded expectations, probably what even even he wanted to. But I think that, you know, the boys were really pleased that he he got the golden boot and that helped us. You know, we took a clean sweep of everything. Obviously, the only little blemish is, you know, the Bed Senior Cup final. But, you know, we, we couldn't have played any better on the night. That was probably one of the best games we played. We had 10 men for 50 minutes and we come up against a team who just chucked, put the bodies on the line and their keepers probably had the game of his life and... Obviously, we we duffed out in the shootout in the end. Yeah, and as you say, I mean, you don't want to sort of dwell on that when you've literally only lost by a penalty kick. You know, if yeah. it if it wasn't that penalty kick, we'd be talking right now, Gary, and it's a triple winning season. And I mean, I, I don't know where even that would have ranked in Bedford history, but I can imagine it would have probably been arguably probably the greatest season in Bedford Town's history. I would have thought if that if we. If that had happened that night. Um, but, yes, that was unfortunate. But, DC, Dan Coulthard, the commercial manager, put a great post out yesterday, I think it was, about stats. And yeah. one really telling stat for me, Gary, and I'm sure hopefully you did see it online, was the win percentage. Did you no. see that? No, I didn't, no. 82%. Yeah, it's not bad, is it? That's not bad, is it? I mean, yeah, not I would have, uh, even, you know, Fergie and obviously Wenger in their, their heights of their, their career in the Premier League were never getting stats like that um, in a league season. No, that's unbelievable. And considering we've lost two of the first five games as well early on, um, and we weren't, we weren't lost. We knew, we knew we just had to find, you know, find a way and we did. Um mm. And we, we changed one or two things around, which we did, um, which which we needed to do. And, you know, that worked out well for us. And like I say, even even the game we lost after that, the Burko game, I'm not sure we should have lost. I think we should have nicked the draw at least that night. But then to go, to go like I keep saying, 25 games unbeaten, to then go on to win the league, is that's phenomenal. And that's, that's credit to the players. That really is. They, they come in, they worked hard, never really moaned. Well, one or two did, but not, not really as a whole. Um, and we just we just kept going. We just got on that little that win and bounce, and you know you're two one down against Ware in the ninety fourth minute, and you end up winning three two in the ninety ninth minute. You know you won you won one with ten men away at Welland, and then looking to go kick on, and we go get an eighty ninth minute winner with ten men, and even in the Bed Senior Cup final again, you know with with ten men for fifty fifty minutes, and we score a ninety seventh minute equaliser to take it to penalties, and. Saturday three one down at half time. We come back and win five three in the Champions of Champions game. So mm. the attitude of these players, you know, you, you'd have never left the Bedford game early last year for definite. You know, we've we've, we've been behind probably eight, ten, eleven times in the season, and we always clawed it back and got got something out of the game, whether we was playing well, whether we was playing poorly. Um, we just had that desire to to keep going and keep putting putting the ball in the right areas, and we had we had we had the players who. You know, who took the glory and put the ball in the net for us at crucial times. Boom. Bob your uncle. Now, your uncle. Uh, before I talk a bit more about you, I just want to, I just want to touch on this because what, what I think is great about Bedford, and I, I will mention it, so the owner and the director, Mr. John Taylor, yeah. he lives and breathes this football club. With every yeah. kick, every second of every day, Bedford Town is everything, everything to him. How, how was he after that um, final league game when you guys picked up the trophy. Emotional. Yeah, I, I can imagine. I, I, feel, yeah. I think I think we was all emotional. Obviously, that's no secret that you know that's his that's his family legacy. 
Um, yeah. His father passed away, um, I think, two or three years ago. Um, and I just remember giving him a, you know, a big hug. And I could tell he was emotional. And his and his son, Sam, he was emotional. The whole family, they was all there. Mm. And, um, you know, that was a big, big day for him. And, you know, the only regret is that, you know, their dad weren't there to see it all happening this oh, year. No, just, yeah. with, with the group of lads, the group of lads that we got, and, you know, the way we've engaged with the fans this year and the way we've engaged with with the the board of directors and John and his family, you know, David Taylor would have would have had a great season this year. But yeah. as John said, he'd have been up there looking down on us, you know, with a big smile on his face. And that, that was just, just come a little bit too late for him. But, you know, John's, John's took it by the horns now. And like I say, his family are nearly always there at all the games and they're fully behind what we're doing. I think, you know, we appreciate them and, you know, they appreciate what the players have done and everything this year. And, you know, we, we, we created some big memories on that day. Yeah, I, I'm sure everyone totally agrees with that, Gary. Thanks for sharing that. So, for you growing up as a youngster, Gary, right, who was your boyhood club and which players or managers, looking back now, do you think perhaps have affected you um, in your football career? Cool. As a, as a, obviously as a young lad living up in, living in Kings Lynn, Kings Lynn was my, the team I supported. Obviously on a bigger scale. Obviously I'm a, I'm a Man United fan, and I was always a um, Brian Robson was a hero growing up. Okay. Um, he was he was the one. But the people who probably had the biggest effect on my career would probably be Peter Morris, who was my manager at um, Kings Lynn and Ketron, and Brian Talbot when I went to. Ruston and Diamonds and they were probably the biggest influences on my career as a player wise and probably even as a manager because obviously if you work for good managers um, you, you pick up the good habits and obviously you've got your own characteristics to throw, throw into it as well but they were, they were so very different managers as well one was total football one was work for second balls one was a massive disciplinarian the other one was um you know, have the crack with the players and, and join in with the players, whereas the other one distanced himself from the players. So you try and get the balance that's right for you. And that's what I've tried to do. And that's that's worked for me so far. And hopefully that will continue to work for me. Cool. And how did that transition for you work then? Obviously, from the player into the management role. How did that come about for you? Um, I was getting about 30, 33, I think, 34, maybe, maybe okay. 33 getting a little bit heavier, a little bit slower. Um, I was playing for Wisbeach and one, I think I was captain or vice captain. One day the manager didn't turn up and I sort of took the team for the day and sort of enjoyed it. And the manager who didn't turn up sort of got the sack and the owner at the time just asked me if I'd take it on for a few weeks. And then I tried to play and manage and that was difficult. I found it difficult to... Uh, sort of have a go at the team when you're part of the team as well. So I, I sort of made a decision there and then that I'll take a step back and, you know, only give give the management thing a little go. And we, we, we picked up a few results the season after and then Kings Lynn, Kevin Boone got me over at Kings Lynn and, and, and the rest is history. You know, I, I kicked on from there and that was some, I was always going to try and stay in football, whether that was going to be doing a bit of scouting or try to be a manager or whatever. But, you know, I went to Kings Lynn and we done well there and obviously won a, got promotion and won a league and had a great trophy run, great bars run and obviously that just that just went from there and obviously now Bedford Town manager and you know I feel, I feel I've still got something to prove at step three, probably a little bit because obviously when I left Lynn we were sort of mid table step three and mm. you know I believe that Bedford will give me the platform to to go on and prove myself at that level. Let's hope so. Um, so, your managerial career, am I right in thinking 2010, you started with Wiz Beach? Yeah. Is that, is that right? Correct. And then obviously moved on to Kings Lynn, had yeah. the second stint at Wiz Beach. Yeah. And then in September 2020, moved to Bedford Town. Is that right? Is that the... Yeah, that's, that's correct. That's the journey. Yeah, after, after, nine, after nine games, COVID hit, and that was, that was frustrating. Yes, that's because... right. I went in there, and we'd, we'd won six and drew three. We were still in the FA Trophy, and we'd had a great win away from home in the Trophy, and we was due to play Alfreton, and we just, everyone come back with a positive test, and we sort of got kicked, got kicked out of the tournament, really, which was 
which was frustrating. So I did actually, I think I went like seven or eight, seven or eight trophy games unbeaten, which would have probably got two wow. on on any, any other year. But okay. yeah, I weren't to be. Um, but there you go. Unlucky so what, what for you then, Gary, looking back at that managerial career of 12 years so far, right? Yeah. What for you would you say has been your biggest achievement in that time? Obviously, the, the two... The two championships at step four has been the biggest achievement. But honestly, probably when we got promoted from step five with Wisbeach to step four, yeah. and got put in the Northern Northern Premier League, um, or Northern Premier League Division One South. We had no budget, like we just no. borrowed players and got players, and, and we just set the team up hard to beat. And we, I think, we won seven games, drew about eighteen or nineteen. And lost about twelve or thirteen, and finished fifth or sixth from bottom, fourth or fifth from bottom, and that probably was the the biggest achievement because we just had no budget, and we just had a load of lads working very, very hard, very, very organised, and that yeah. was that was a great season, but that was just un, unsustainable at that level, unsustainable. Right. So you mentioned them I think ten minutes ago. We're going to just talk about them very, very quickly. The Bedford Town fans, the faithful. Um, they are a loud bunch. They are very, very passionate. They love their football. They love their club. And they've taken you in as one of their own, haven't they? Um, yeah. What would you like to say to the Bedford Town fans who are watching this? What would I like to say to them? Just, you know, just thanks thanks for the support this year. You know, we've doubled the gates. The gates were around 250, 275, you know, on a good game, perhaps 350. But, you know, we average actually, I think, five hundred and thirty something this year. Yeah, it's average. mad, mad. And I just, I just feel like even looking at the playoff game the other night, um, where in North Lee, sixteen hundred people there. You know, the twelve hundred we had against um, Burko this year, and you know, I, I just, I just don't think they realise the difference they make. Like, if 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 you got eight hundred of them there regular. Um, the difference that would make to the players, the revenue that would make that that would make the club so much better. And yeah. I just urge people to stick by us next year. You know, we know we're going to have some um, some tough tough games, but like I say, at home, I think we'll be fine. We'll probably win as many as we lose for definite, and we're going to have some tough away trips. So I just want I just want the supporters to stay with us next year, despite what we do in the team. Win, lose, or draw, will give maximum effort as they always have done. You know, from the losing positions this year that we've come back from, and you know, just just stay true to us. We'll stay true to them, and hopefully they stay true to us. And there's no reason why we can't be, hopefully, doing this in another year or two again with with another promotion if if we get it bang on between us all. You know, between John, myself, the backroom staff. You know the coaches and and the supporters, everyone. If we all pull together, I do believe that the club has got legs to to go again. Nice one, well said. Um, now you just mentioned them. Let's talk about them. The backroom yeah. staff. Yeah, you've got a very very talented group there, haven't you? Yes, I have. I have, and and that just works. You've got you've got Daz, who he does a lot of the stuff that I don't want to do. Um, he, he, he's, you know, he's worth his weight in gold. You know, we we do all the analysis. Obviously, Martin, the scout, he he send all the things for it. Me and Daz, Daz print it all out. And when we do the set pieces and everything else, and if there's a player I like, I get agent Daz to go undercover and get hold of his number and things <laughs> like that for me. Um, then we've got we've got Graham, great coach, great bloke. You know, does it all for the love of the game cart the balls everywhere, always there, you know, if, if you're down and pick you up, you know, he's 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 a he's a real um what's the word I'm looking for? Um optimist. If we was playing Man City tonight, he he would think we could go there and win. That's just, just how he is. He's he's super, super confident in the lad's ability. Um and he, and he's just a great guy. We've got yeah. Jazzy who's the who's the best physio in the league, without a shadow of a doubt. She's she's got people back this year from injuries should be out eight, ten weeks. They've been back in four and five with the, with the stuff she set them. And obviously you've got James and Dan and Ian and, you know, there's probably too many to mention. Mike and Carol, the bar staff and every, everyone, that's, that's, that's a friendly club. And when it went through the door uh, two years ago, that was too friendly because 
everyone got caught up in this friendly this friendly thing and the team were too nice and you know we definitely right. changed we definitely changed that this year that was always a nice place to go play and I watched a lot of the highlights before I went in and they'd, they'd win one they beat Hales on 3-1 then they'd lose to North Lee 5-4 and then they'd win draw one and then they'd win one and there was there was no fair factor there and, and this year we, we got the right players in and we 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 didn't get enough credit for being tough as well. You know, we was a good football team, but we we outrun people, we outwork people, we could stick our foot in, we stick our head in. Um and obviously we, we was the best team in the league, but we, we had that we could do it anyway, we could outplay you, we could outfight you. And we, we needed all them qualities at, at different stages in the season. So so for you then, Gary, what what have been the challenges of managing a side that's actually been really successful this year? Leaving leaving people out, leaving right. leaving, pe- leaving people out. This, we've rotated the squad really well this year because we ain't got a, where players have played forty five games and some players have played five. I think every player in the squad who's been with us at the start has played at least twenty twenty one games um, because. If if you don't um, if you don't um, rotate, then obviously you, you're going to cause yourself cause yourself yeah. problems. I've just got to say as well, Sam Gorgon, who do the coach on the Thursday, just put tears of a guy and face to me. He do the coach <laughs> on the Thursday, and he's been unbelievable as well. And he he helps us with a lot of the recruitment as well with his um, contacts with Peter Burst. So sorry, Gorgs, I was just going through the match day stuff. But yeah, so so yeah, that that was the biggest the biggest one was um the you know the leaving people out the side when they've perhaps done well for you, but you know you have to pick courses for courses, and that's what I think we've done done very well this year. Cool. And what so what for you have been the real strengths of this team? Desire, the desire mm-hmm. to do well. Um, okay. Desire to do well. Desire to work for each other. Um, like I say, you know, if if the lads needed a bollock, and there's, there's there's a couple of senior senior players to do it on the pitch, and I always mm-hmm. say to the players, sometimes they need to sort the problems out on the pitch themselves. You know, that can't always come from the sidelines. Sometimes they need to see it and they need to sort them out themselves. And I think the legs as well. I mean, like the, like I said, with the training that Graham and Sam put into the boys, that's always very, very high tempo. That's always <clears throat> ball related most of the time. And um I think our fitness this year was was a big, big factor in us doing so well for so long in games as well. Cool. Um so let's talk about the leader on the pitch. Because we know how good a goal he is, but let's talk about his leadership as well of this team this season and what he's what he's done in particular. So Alex Street Peds, um, obviously you've known you've known him for a long, long time. Um, so how did all that come about? That that move of getting him to Bedford, getting him as captain, and what he has done for this squad as leader. He's just Peds, Peds, isn't he? You know, he's first and foremost, he's a great goalkeeper. And what what yeah. people what people don't know this year is he's he's played virtually I'm, I'm going to say 85% of the season with an injury that wow. some some people probably wouldn't even even play with and you know he's got to go for an MRI scan which he's which he's sorting out himself this week okay um, and Jazzy's been managing him through the through the pain if you like he's not been out of train as often as he wants but just him being in, just him being behind the back four has helped us. So, mm-hmm. as a leader, he's just he's just a go-to guy. Um, everyone, <clears throat> everyone can go to him. Um, he, he can put his arm around people. You know, he he's a good link between for me and the players because I've known him quite a while. So, yeah, he's been he's been a good captain. Um, he's, he's been the best goalkeeper, um, and hopefully we can get his injury sorted and sort of deal out and, and get him back next year and, you know, hopefully he'll, he'll win another Golden Glove. Cool. Now, there are um, there are some characters in the squad, aren't there? Um, let's talk, maybe just name drop a few of them. Who for you are the real, who have been the real, real characters? Some of them probably don't even need 
name it. <laughs> uh, I did. I did actually go round the dressing room um, on Saturday uh, with the mix of players that we've got. I can't repeat. I can't repeat them. Obviously on air. That was just a little <laughs> croaky one. But there is some real cat. Obviously Callum's. Callum's probably when you think character, you probably he's a legend Callum. though. <laughs> yeah, he's been great. He's been great this year. He's, you know. We've had our ups and downs. We've had one or two little spats, but that's always a, a bear and a handshake. And you know, there's there's no love lost between us. And you mm. know, he's he's a real character. But there's probably seven or eight lads in there who, who you'd say are probably characters, and more importantly, characters off the pitch. But you know, we've got some real characters on the pitch. You know, who, mm -hmm. who dig in, dig in for each other, and that that do when you lead. And you know, we. We all have a bear afterwards. I know some managers stop the players having a bear after the games, but I think that's been a real togetherness for us this year, home and away. We, we always stay and have a couple of bears and a bit of a crack. And, you know, that's that's where you get to know about people, you know, having not just turning up, getting in your car, going home. Because you're strangers then, you know, you've got to have that little bit of camaraderie together. And yeah. that's who's in good stead this year. Cool. And I have to ask this because um, I didn't ask you the other week um, when I saw you. For you, if you had to choose a goal of the season, what would be the gaffer's goal of the season? That's a tough one for me. Um, I know there were some blind... There, there have been some Charlie, absolute Charlie, blinders. Charlie's one will probably win it because of the occasion. But the, the occasion, the, yeah. The best goal of the season, I think, was DS's against Kempston, where he's yeah. Put yeah. And on the half volley. I think technically that's the best one, but Charlie's won against um, Burke Hampstead because of the occasion is probably the one that most people remember. Oh, Technic technically wise, I think probably my DS is one, but there was a good there was a good one um, where on Monday wasn't there Nash? Was that? Yes, that wasn't that wasn't a bad goal. Yeah, I remember what my reaction was that day. Um, that was certainly no one was expecting it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> say that some strike that. But yeah, we've we've scored we've scored six or seven this year that could all that could all be in a goal this season. We've scored some great goals this year from from a lot of different areas. But yeah, it's mm. been it's been been a great season. Absolutely. Um, you, you mentioned MDS. Let's talk about him. Um, obviously, your your boy um, Danny. What a season he has had. Yeah, and that's that's always probably a little bit tougher for him because obviously. He's, he's the manager's son, but you know he's earned his he's earned his strokes this year. He's earned the respect of of the yeah. supporters this year. He's um you know he's he's a he's he's got great work rate. And him, him, Callum, and who have formed a great partnership early on. And obviously we added Joe Butterworth to that late on as well. And Will and Drew have done a job in there for us sometimes as well. So we've got a great mix. But I think he's learned a lot this year. Like. We say about characters and, you know, probably a little bit of the, the, the dark arts off Callum and things like that. But, yeah, you know, he's he's another one who's, who's a relatively young lad and hopefully he'll kick on with us at the next level. And, you know, you've got your Drews, your Connors, your Dannys, your Hoos, Steelys, Lewis Michios, uh, Sean Keynes. You know, there's a, there's a lot of young young lads in that squad. You know, if I've missed anyone out, I'm sorry, but there's a lot of young lads in that squad. Who have got a, got long, long careers ahead of them? You know he's no different, but you know they've all got to improve again next year. To hopefully, kick on. Okay, so for you, it's an extra question. Who for you has been the most improved player through the season? Connor Tomlinson. Yeah, I think I think he's been. We've 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 changed this. We've changed this game. Um, cool. When when I went into the club, he was. Um, he was a tricks and flicks um, number ten sort of midfielder. His goal record was was non-existent, and we we just worked on him to sort of run him behind because that's his strength, you know, getting defenders yeah. one on one. You know, he, he kills people. He did the other day. He killed two or three of them. Um, and you know, he's he's learned. He's listened. He's learned. His work rate has got so much better. He uses his body now, so. <clears throat> for me, there's there's a lot of improvers, but yeah, you know, no no one wants the most improved tag, but he's 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 improved um, loads this year, and 
obviously people like Hugh Jones just got better and better and better. And mm -hmm. you know, you mentioned the yes, he got better. Joe Butterworth come in. There's a lot mm -hmm. of Lewis Michio. They just yeah. they just kept getting better and better as the as the season went on. And you know that's that, that's a credit to all the lads really. They, they all pushed each other to get better every single week. Love it. So we're running out of time. So what are you going to be doing these next few weeks? Obviously before Benidorm. So what are you sort of doing um, in the meanwhile before you let off steam? <laughs> well, to be, to be honest, that is, you know, the season's tough. I, I, I work away a lot and um, obviously they love football and me and my partner Tanya, we've got five boys between us. So yeah. that is definitely, you know, chill out and spend some time with the, time with the family, really. <clears throat> and, you know, cause you only get really sort of eight weeks off because obviously pre-season will start sort of mm -hmm. end of June. So we've got yeah. the end of season due on um, on Friday night. And then that's, that's sort of kick back and just chill out and expect, catch, catch up with the hours you missed with the family and have a couple of sneaky football phone calls in between trying to sign players and stuff like that. But yeah, yeah just just try and relax, enjoy it, enjoy the, enjoy the summer and recharge the batteries ready to go again next year cool so when really does the a lot of the planning for next season start for you now now no. yeah I'm, I'm sort of Benidorm <laughs> no, no, I definitely don't start in Benidorm um, <laughs> no no really because you've got to start like I, I work away quite a lot so I can use use the time on my way to sort of we, we've got to try and plan pre-season games and Obviously, cool. players are what to speak to for next year. I can do them calls and stuff, and but you don't really ever ever stop. But you just have, you just have to switch off a little bit, and you're so focused during the season, flat out. Then, obviously, you know you, you just need that break for three or four weeks just to just to recharge the batteries, ready to go again. Cool. So we'll. Um, I think everyone will be waiting on tender hooks to start hearing some announcements in um, in due course. From the club. Yeah. Um, so thank you so much, um, Gary, for tonight. Because I, I felt awful um, letting you down last week, but thank you for agreeing to do this and rescheduling it. Because uh, you know it's been fantastic, and I hope everyone that does watch it or has already watched it um, really enjoys listening to you. Um, because you know you, what you've done, and I've already messaged you, Gary. But what you've achieved this season for that football club is what that club should have and what it deserves and you've delivered um so huge hats off to you and i'm sure the fans the players you know everyone has already told you that anyway but it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you gary i will yeah. obviously definitely catch up with you soon um yeah. but enjoy the rest of the evening more importantly enjoy friday night and enjoy yeah. benadorm with the boys thank you very much thank you no pleasure pleasure gary um so that's it everyone thank you very much for watching all the best gary Cheers.